Hi everybody, so it's part two of my blue tit. As you can see, I got this uh, piece finished off. Um, just to show you how easy it is to peel off. There we go. That's the back of it. Uh, let me just stick it back on again. All I need to do is put my hot iron on there. stick on okay I also put this small piece in here I did it all in one color it could be a slightly better contrast but I think it'll look okay once it's all done and today I thought we could do this piece up here so that's this piece um, and that's in light grays it's not in white it's in light grays now I find uh, grey is probably the hardest colour to find in fabric. Um, that I, there's just not that many choices. So if you find that you can't get enough night light grey, then you can use whites in there as well. It's not gonna it's not gonna make that much difference. Um, the only issue I would say is just up here on this little bit which is a very bright white so if you if you've used whites in this bit see if you can find something really bright to go in that small area because obviously this is grey as well um, so you want a little bit of a contrast just to give that little ping of colour so uh, I'm going to do it like this again uh, I'm using a felt tip this time because I don't think you could see it terribly well <laughs> the last time um, and I'm not going to cut it out either it was pointed out to me quite rightly that it's easier just to cut it out all in one go I was just trying to show you how the shape worked last time I wouldn't normally cut it out and then just cut it out as a whole thing at the end. So let's find a bit of tape, just pop that up with so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully that will stick up there long enough. Um, this is my little bundle of greys that I found. Uh, like I said, I find grey probably the hardest colour to find in the shops. Um, I do have a little stash of grey because I use quite a lot of grey within uh, my dog portraits um, so I, I'm always on the lookout for grey uh, so I'm trying to keep my hands up this time as well so I'm just going to whip that off all these bits have been used before so they've got different little chunks cut out of them and everything but that doesn't matter so I'm just going straight over the line Hopefully you'll be able to see that better when you're cutting it out afterwards. So just stick that in. Again I use um, Wonder Web or Wonder Under on my fabrics. So just going to this bit. I'm just going to take a bit off of here. Peel the backing off which is always the hardest part of the whole thing. Stick him on. As easy as that. I did when I was doing the yellows, I did do one or two sort of quite pointy feathery like bits just to give that impression that it's a feather coming down and I try to make things going down as well within the breath the way that the feathers would hang so things sort of tended to go downwards on this top piece the feathers would actually go that way 
on the head. So I'm going to try and get all the feathers, all the pieces of material kind of looking as if they're going that way. So sort of longer, thinner bits that sort of head over in that direction, if that makes sense. When I'm doing my dogs, it's all about the direction that you put your fabric on rather than the shape of your fabric to some degree. So again, it's just a long... I'm just filling in the gaps, really. And if you find you've got a nice sort of shaped bit that that one is, I'm just going to drop that one behind because it looks better. And that's what's great about the bundle web is that you can just lift, lift it, put it back on and lift it again and put it back on again. So I'm just using all my bits, all the bits out of the box. One thing I would say is I've, I've obviously lined this in felt tip. If you're doing this with quite thin fabrics, you do need to be a bit careful because the, you could find that the felt tip will actually mark. You can see there, look, felt tips mark the, the underside of the fabric and sometimes it can show through. And it's the same pencil, so you do need to be a little bit careful. Try not to do too deeper. Um, thickness of your pencils and your pens. I wouldn't normally use a felt tip, I'd use a pencil, but I was conscious that you probably couldn't see it. But again, pencil will mark, so just do it as light as you can. And if you do it, if you do it light on the top, you can always turn the parchment paper over and just trace it through onto the other side so that you'll be able to see it easier when you cut it out. always add some wipes into this as well if you want to just to pale it down a little bit let's just see how that yeah that looks quite nice I do like a few little shiny bits <laughs> typically the dogs have started barking got a really interesting edge on there so I'm going to put this behind it fabric that I've used already in there just to repeat it. Um, I use a huge range of fabrics. I don't limit myself to what I'm using. All I would say is that if I use it in one spot I try and use it again so it's not just a single piece of fabric that colour it'll be repeated somewhere within piece that's my only rule really is that you don't just get one single piece because sometimes that will just jar um, if you use it repeatedly it will blend in a lot better this slightly 
darker grey and white theme. Um, just going to have a look at my pattern. So we've got a darker edge running here, so I think we can go a bit darker. Quite like this, so I'd like to use it. Nice edge on it. And I'm gonna make sure I'm doing what I say. I'm gonna use this flat again somewhere else. Um I'm use it against the beak because it's slightly lighter colour there, so I'm gonna go up here where I know it's gonna be up against the black. So it will still stand out nicely. And then I'm going to just start coating what I've already used. So got this, which I think might be quite nice. It's a little sort of contrast, got a bit of interest in the and this is um this piece is actually the opposite side of the materials. So I stuck um I wonder under that's that's the actual side with the pattern on. But I stuck the wonder under onto that piece so that it just creates a slightly faded look to it rather than I didn't want the big full on green. Um, it's quite a good tip is to look at your fabric and sometimes just use the other back side of it rather than the front side. Gives you a more subtle pattern sometimes which works better in some pieces. Just being stable because there's a bit of silicate it's not sticking brilliantly. Okay, so just keep going and filling in. Pack. Is it sticky on there? Look at the look at the colour of my <laughs> it's not very clean. <laughs> uh, I use um, this iron cleaner. Um, Obviously not enough because the, the colour of that is not exactly looking great, is it? Um, but uh, it works quite well because your irons do get pretty filthy. Let's try this. I really like this. This is uh, just got a little subtle pattern on it. Ooh, where are we? <laughs> Quite right there. Take that off. 
obviously I'm going to be cutting round the shape so it doesn't matter if bits go across it at all. But I just do want to make sure that I've filled in everything within that shape. Kind of get the vibe that it's sort of going that way rather than this one that's going downwards it's sort of going off that way just by the shape of the pieces that you're using you can create that And I use all sorts of fabric. I don't just stick to typical sort of quilting type fabrics. I use anything, any thickness. Um, been known to cut up clothes if there's a particular colour that I desperately needed. Um, and I'll use even upholstery fabrics if it's the right colour. I'll use it. And I just make sure that I tuck those pieces behind other pieces so that they sit as flat as they can. But saying that, I quite like the extra depth and texture that thicker pieces make. sticky that bit just because I've got it on the wrong side <laughs> I'm going to tuck that under so I haven't got a little gap there we go that's what it is there we go it's going to stick in this time note to self put it the right way around This bit is obviously I've just cut it by stash. And that it's got a funny old shape to it because I've used it on something else. But it'll work perfectly because it'll just give it some some more interest. So you get that nice little sort of shape that goes along there. Slip it in there. It's a bit straggly, this bit, so I'm just going to cut off the bits. I've got very much of this so I'm trying to make the most of it. I'm just going to cut it in half actually so I can just use this another bit somewhere else just to it's just got a slight tinge to yellow in that which actually quite work or should work quite well go quite well with the breast of it. Nice sticky stuff on there to get that off. There we go. Now, you've probably worked out that I've got dogs, I've got four golden retrievers. 
and most of my pieces come with a bit of additional dog hair somewhere or other. My pieces, I don't tend to do much bigger than that when I'm doing this sort of thing. If I'm doing it as a whole uh, block of one colour, obviously that's different, but when I'm cutting bits out and sticking it on like this, I don't tend to do too big a pieces, but it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. That's the thing, there's no right or wrong for this. It's just what looks okay, what looks good. Stand back, look at it, leave it, go back to it, have another look at it. And you'll quickly see the bits that don't work. They'll, they'll stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and those are the bits that you can, need to change. And by using this method, it's easy to change it. If you're sticking it onto fabric, it's much, much harder to change it. Okay, so we've just got this bit here to fill in. Trying to find something that won't uh, not going to clash with anything else. What can I use in there that I haven't used? <laughs> kind of filled it all in. Um, could use another bit of this, I think. nicely just going to lift this whole bit up slide it down that and you'll notice I didn't particularly cut it out to the shape I just used a big block of it and then just slide it under me oh, look I haven't quite managed to cover the whole thing oh maybe we get there Come on. Yes, just. Mm -hmm. That was lucky. It's just dropped a bit. There we go. You can see that we've covered over. And because I used the felt tip, you can actually see it this time, the whole shape. So now all I'm going to do is cut this shape out. So it's much easier to do it like that. Again, I just remind you to be careful with what you use. I've obviously over exaggerated my lines using a felt tip so that you could so it shows up better on the video, but try and keep your lines as faded and light as you can underneath it, but still be able to see it, cut it out. And then you haven't got to worry about it bleeding through onto your fabric especially if you're using sort of quite thin light fabrics which I quite like I, I mean I even use the linings of jackets and that sort of thing that, that sort of very silky type fabric I'm not very good with the names of fabric I don't know what they were called <laughs> like the satiny type thing you get in the lining the jackets and that's really nice to use because it's it cuts nicely and it's quite flat as well if you know what I mean so it sticks on really nicely just finish cutting this out for you
go. So that's all cut out, and then we're just going to peel it off of parchment paper. At this stage, you can see that you can't really see. Let me up against something that's a bit darker. And you can see that I have got one or two little holes, but that doesn't matter. That will fill in, especially when you put a backing behind. Let's see if we can work out where it goes. There we go. It's just sitting a little bit high around that eye. So I'm just going to take off that little pointy bit there. Sink it back down a little bit. There. You can stick it on. And then I obviously need the same colour combination for this piece going across here. So that will be my next bit, but that will be it for today.